Hello everyone. Welcome to a presentation on knockout mice. Myself S. Bin Simol, 2nd MSc Biochemistry student, Department of Biochemistry, Kariwattam Campus. In this presentation, I will be discussing about what is a knockout mice, how we can create a knockout mice using embryonic stem cell and by utilizing CRISPR, what are the advantages of knockout mice and drawbacks of knockout mice. First, what is a knockout mouse? A knockout mouse is a laboratory mouse in which researchers have inactivated or knocked out an existing gene by replacing it or disrupting it with an artificial piece of DNA. The loss of gene activity often causes changes in the mouse phenotype and the change in phenotype provide valuable information on the function of the gene. The Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 2007 was jointly awarded to Mario R. Capacci, Sir Martin J. Evans and Oliver Smithies for their discoveries of principles for introducing specific gene modifications in mice by the use of embryonic stem cells. Martin J. Evans had done cultivation of embryonic stem cells, Oliver Smithies had done gene targeting and Mario R. Capacci had done gene knockout. Next, how we can create knockout mice? Creating a knockout mice can involve different methods and technologies such as by using embryonic stem cell and utilizing CRISPR. First, how we can create it by using embryonic stem cell, that is gene targeting by homologous recombination using embryonic stem cell. First, what is a homologous recombination? It is the exchange of genetic material between two strands of DNA that contain long stretches of similar base sequence. This is an illustration showing the homologous recombination. In this gene targeting method, we are introducing an artificial gene sequence that is directly targeted to the specific gene sequence that we are going to knock out with the help of a homologous recombination vector. The homologous sequence in the vector are positioned to flank the existing gene or the, knockout, the gene which we are going to knock out on both sides, that is on upstream and downstream. So in the embryonic stem cell, the cellular process of homologous recombination take over, identifying the matching part of the sequence and supporting replacement of original piece of DNA with the engineered artificial homologous gene sequence, hence knocking out the wild type gene. So this is the flowchart showing the steps of gene targeting method. As this method is done in embryonic stem cell, the first step is the culturing of embryonic stem cell from mouse. Then we need a vector to introduce the homologous sequence into the embryonic stem cell. So the second step is designing a targeting vector. And the targeting vector will contain a homologous sequence and a marker gene for selection. Then we will introduce that targeting vector into the embryonic stem cell. That is the third step is embryonic stem cell transfection. Then we need to screen the embryonic stem cell to identify the clones that have underwent proper homologous recombination. Then we will proliferate that clones under when homologous recombination and inject that embryonic stem cell into the blastocyst. And in the F1 generation, we will get chimeric mouse. Chimeric mouse means it contains both normal type cells and genetically manipulated knockout cells. But we need a completely knockout mice, that is a homozygous knockout. For this, we will crossbreed this chimeric mouse to pass the desired mutation or germline transmission. So next I will explain the gene targeting method with the help of an illustration. So in this illustration, the targeted gene is BMP7. So in the A, we are culturing the embryonic stem cell. And in the step B, we need to create an artificial BMP7 gene and we will introduce a selectable marker gene that is NeoR gene. NeoR gene means neomycin resistant gene into the artificially created BMP7 gene with the help of restriction endonuclease and ligase to get a mutated BMP7 with neomycin resistant gene insertion. Then we will introduce that mutated BMP7 into the embryonic stem cell by electroporation. In the embryonic stem cell, the homologous recombination takes place and knocking out the wild type BMP7 gene. And we will select the heterozygous embryonic stem cell by their neomycin resistance. Then we will inject the heterozygous selected embryonic stem cell into the blastocyst and then inject that blastocyst into the uterus. In the F1 generation, we will get the chimeric mouse. 
but we need a completely knockout mice. For that, we will cross that chimeric mouse first with the wild type mouse. So in the F2 generation, we will get a wild type mice with BMP7+, plus, BMP7+, plus, and a heterozygote with BMP7+, plus, and BMP7-, minus, and a heterozygote with BMP7+, plus, BMP7+. Plus. Then to obtain an F3 generation, we will mate the heterozygous. And in the F3 generation, we will get a wild type with BMP7+, plus, BMP7+, plus, and a homozygote with BMP7-, minus, and BMP7-, minus, and a heterozygote with BMP7+, plus, and BMP7-. Minus. So in the F3 generation, we will get a completely knockout mice, that is a homozygous knockout. So the breeding of heterozygous mice we will get 25% of their progeny as a homozygous mutant of BMP7. So this is the morphological analysis of BMP7 knockout mice. What happens if the BMP7 gene is knocked out? If the BMP7 gene is knocked out, the resultant mice will lack eye and also the kidney is atrophied. The figure here clearly shows the lack of eye. The figure A represents the wild type mouse and the figure B represents the knockout mice with BMP7 gene is deficient. So in the first figure, the I is present. But in the B figure, the I is absent. And in the C figure, the wild type mice kidney is healthy. But the mutated BMP7 knockout mice is kidney is atrophied. So that's all about gene targeting method. We can also utilize the CRISPR-Cas9 technology to make a knockout mice model. The CRISPR genome editing system is an RNA-gated endonuclease system allowing the user to design gRNA. gRNA means gate RNA which will target small DNA sequences of interest. In the presence of Cas9 endonuclease, the gate RNA directs Cas9 to unwind and cleave the double-stranded DNA at a specific location. For the generation of knockout alleles, the micro-injection of a single-gate RNA in zygote is sufficient to create intels. Intels means insertion or deletion in a critical exon of choice, inducing a frame-shift mutation and therefore functionally abolishing the gene of interest. The emergence of CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology has considerably improved the time frame and the process of creating these modified alleles. In particular, this revolutionary technology has enabled the rapid production of knockout mice or mice carrying a single point mutation which mimic those in human patients. Next, advantages of knockout mouse. Knockout mouse provide valuable clues about gene function. Humans share many genes with mice thus by observing the characteristics of knockout mice gives information that can be used to better understand how a similar gene may cause or contribute to disease in humans. Knockout mice have been useful in studying and modeling different kinds of cancers, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, substance abuse, anxiety, aging and Parkinson's disease. Knockout mice is also useful in drug development and drug testing. There are several knockout mouse available nowadays, among which some of them are listed here. First one is skid mouse. Skid means severe combined immune deficiency. In this condition, the total immune system is lacking. And the skid mice were developed by eliminating a single gene and the resultant mice lost the ability to produce B lymphocyte and T lymphocytes. Second one, nude mice. Fox N1 gene is knocked out to form nude mice and the mutation caused deteriorated or absence of thymus resulting in inhibited immune system due to the reduced number of T-cells. And this nude mice is valuable in research because it receives many tissues and tumor grafts as it mount no rejection response. Next, db bar db mice. db bar db mice is created by knocking out leptin gene and the resulting mice will be obese and develop diabetics. Hence, it can be used to model phase 1 to 3 of diabetics type 2 and obesity. Then knockout mouse with memory loss. The memory process in brain are believed to be carried out by a specialized area called hippocampus. By a gene knockout technique, researchers have developed mice that lack hippocampus. And these knockout mice lack the ability to remember. Next drawbacks of knockout mice. About 15% of the gene knockouts are developmentally lethal. 
which means that the genetically altered embryo cannot grow into adult mice. The lack of adult mice limits studies to embryonic development and make it more difficult to determine a gene's function in relation to human health. In some instances, the gene may serve a different function in adults than in developing embryos. Knocking out a gene also may fail to produce an observable change in a mouse or may even produce different characteristics from those observed in human in which the same gene is inactivated. For example, mutations in the p53 gene are associated with more than half of human cancers and often lead to tumor in a particular set of tissues. However, when the p53 gene is knocked out in mice, the animal develops tumor in a different array of tissues. Despite of these drawbacks, knockout mice have proven to be highly efficient for studying gene function and has aided advances in the treatment and prevention of human diseases. Let me conclude by stating a recent application of knockout mice in fighting against the recent global COVID-19 pandemic, that is the creation of ACE2 knockout mice. ACE2 means angiotensin converting enzyme 2 for studying infectious respiratory disease and SARS. SARS means severe acute respiratory syndrome. The ACE2 protein is an essential receptor for SARS infection in vivo by binding to the SARS coronavirus S proteins. S proteins means spike proteins. So when the spike protein binds to the ACE2 receptor proteins, that will promote the syncytia formation in the lungs of disease to human, in mice in vivo, and similarly for SARS coronavirus 2 in vitro. The ACE2 knockout mouse was used in a mouse adapted SARS coronavirus infection model and found to be resistant to viral infection. No lung histology from ACE2 knockout mice challenged with SARS coronavirus showed signs of inflammation, but SARS infected wild type mice displayed mild infection with leukocyte infiltration. These results and additional publications demonstrated the validity of ACE2 knockout mouse in evaluating a recombinant ACE2 protein as a treatment to block the spread of SARS and to protect SARS patients from developing lung failure. Thus, the ACE2 knockout mouse can be used to investigate the pathophysiological role of ACE2 in SARS infection and other emerging infectious diseases that affect the lungs to study the role of acute lung injury such as ARDS. ARDS means acute respiratory distress syndrome and to interrogate the relevance of ACE2 as a target for therapeutic invention. That's all about knockout mice. These are my references. Thank you for listening.